We're in Fogo Island, off the coast of Newfoundland, imagining the best way to make a career from fishing. You would think we would want to catch the most fish we could every day using the least amount of effort. But let's cast our nets for a deeper understanding. I assess fisheries and I look at the impacts of different gear on the ecosystem and on other species. A bottom trawl, a boat will basically have a large net attached to the back and it scrapes along the bottom because caught are bottom dwellers. We can see how a trawl net works beneath the waves by dropping this model into a flume tank. When you design fishing gear, it's really expensive and it's huge and it's very complicated and it's actually hard to see how it works when you put it at the bottom of the ocean. So when we do it in the flume tank here, we can very easily make a model and see how that model works before you build the full scale one and take it to sea. This is the largest flume tank in the entire world, but it's still not big enough to contain an actual trawl net. A real size trawl net is like the size of an airplane. It's huge, it's a massive net that goes through the water. But what we do here is we make a scale model. So it's eight times smaller than the actual net that you see in the water. Now imagine the impact of a real bottom trawler. It would be eight times the open mouth, swallowing eight times the catch. These nets uh, can catch a lot and they're, they're very efficient from a fisherman's perspective. There's consequences to fishing this way and one of the things is called bycatch or when you catch something other than what you're intending to catch. So it would probably have the biggest impact just because of how big the nets are and sort of how vast an area they use. Might there be a better option using a more sustainable kind of gear? When the Canadian government declared a ban on industrial cod fishing to save the stock, it greatly reduced the amount of trawling in Canadian waters. At the same time, some inshore fishing was allowed to continue, where it's smaller crews, smaller boats, smaller catches, so it's easier on the cod stock. But the overall impact of that gear still depends on the particular configuration. This is a bottom gill net, which is which is a different type of gear. Fishers will weight it down and they'll sort of stretch it over a certain uh, area in the water. It'll sink down and it'll catch cod. But as you can see, the mesh isn't very big, so it's gonna catch a lot of other things too, potentially, right? So they're essentially like a curtain in the water, but one that's invisible to the yeah. fish. And so they swim into it and they die. And then everything else swims into it and dies. And so why are they still used? Because you can catch a lot of fish at once. So, might there be a third, even more sustainable way to fish cod? Different kinds of fish pots have been around since the late 1800s. They've only been adopted and adapted in Newfoundland recently. Now, ultimately the way a pot works is there's a bait. It's a big smelly piece of fish that other fish want to go in and try and eat themselves. It's covered in a large net and at the top you see some floats and it actually drags the whole roof of the pot up to the top like that. And they get into the pot by going through one of these entrances right here. And then now it's inside the trap. Pod pot has been specifically designed to catch mainly cod. Um, it's the hole that the cod go in is specific to a certain size fish. Cod pots don't kill fish, they trap fish. There's less of them, but they're in better condition. And the really nice thing about these is that even if you do catch something that isn't a cod, they're still alive, right? So you can just kind of release them back into the environment unharmed. What about using the oldest method, one that's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years? This is hand lining. They've got an actual line, like a single line with a baited hook, and they'll kind of try and get the cod to bite the hook. And so they're bringing up one fish at a time. That seems like a lot of work for one fish. They can catch 2,000 pounds a day with hand line. It's a very efficient process um, for fishers who know what they're doing. Hand lining for cod creates the least amount of stress and damage to the animal. And this means it might have the highest dollar value when it's brought to market. Oh, that's a good one. It's more sustainable, it's more selective. And we also see consumers changing their behavior. They're asking for more sustainable fish, uh, fish that was caught in a gentler way, and that's better quality. Hey, hey, I caught two so far. Yeah, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> 
So when considering how to balance the ecosystem with economics, handlining could be an overall net positive.